In Portland, Oregon, officials broke up one of the biggest homeless encampments throughout the city, throughout the state, in fact. It's so big that they pulled out 150 stolen cars. You think about that. Think about the space it would take for 150 vehicles. Just just putting them somewhere. Well, they had this. Tons and tons of garbage, destroyed tents. I mean, you name it. Just an absolute wreck. Human feces, oil coming out of these rigs that aren't running, the toxicity. And this is in this is in a super nice, you know, woodsy type environment. Not so much anymore. It's going to take years to clean this up. But it was so bad that they even found live pigs. These homeless people who lived like pigs actually had pigs. It's what they were doing. Let's jump on in. Let's see what the dealio is. This is the, one of the titles was Destruction at Natural Area. Well, yeah, anywhere you've got a homeless encampment, an unauthorized homeless encampment, it is going to be a wreck. You're going to have needles. You're going to have human feces. You're going to have garbage. You're going to have waste. I talked about how many of the tents just got thrown away in Portland. They handed out how many thousand was it? An insane number. The city of Portland was like, hey, you know what? Multnomah County, they're the ones that actually give out the tents. You guys should sue them as well. You had a group of, I think it was 10 or 12 um, people that were disabled, both you know physically, they're either in wheelchairs or they're blind, they couldn't see. Well, in Portland, homeless encampments are so bad that you can't, and like anywhere else, anywhere they post up on the sidewalk, you can't get around, you can't get past them, you can't get down that street, can't get down that sidewalk. So people with disabilities... They basically sued the city of Portland. And one of Portland's things was, is, yeah, if we're going to go down in flames, we might as well take everybody with us. Hey, those guys over there, the county, they, they gave out like 36,000 tents. I can't remember what the exact number was, but it was just this insane a number of tents that they just handed out willy nilly. Here you go. Here's a tent. You know, stay dry. It's all good. So after years of unsanctioned camping, the city of Portland, Oregon has cleared the big four corners natural area. Not natural anymore, is it? It is naturally gross because a bunch of homeless people have been posted up in there, living their lifestyle and destroying a natural area. KATU was there when the cleanup crews pulled in two weeks ago and tracked the progress for days. They pulled out more than 150 stolen cars, Tons of trash and literally tons of trash. And even live pigs from the area. Live pigs. It was one of the most extensive camp cleanups in the city's history, and the damage left behind is shocking. Should we take a moment right now and should we just watch some video? Just take a quick peeky peek and see what we've got? I think we should. Let's, let's take a look at the pigs first. Here's a all right, so they're in some kind of metal cage. They're just eating away. It, it, it boggles my mind that these people are going to go that far where they've got literally wild pigs doing their thing, right? I mean, just absolutely destroyed. I would say that the dump looks way better than this. At least the dump is somewhat organized. This is just trash on top of trash on top of trash. You've got what looks like you know, dozens of garbage bags. You've got a burned out canopy. You've got posted no trespassing signs. I wouldn't want to go in there. No offense, guys, but yeah, you wouldn't catch me in there. And just the amount of just garbage is crazy and overwhelming. And yet, you know, these people choose to live that way. And some of the things that we say is, well, that we say are, well, when they really get down on their, their last leg, when they really bottom out, that's when they'll ask for help. Not really seeing that happen. Not really seeing that happen come out of this stuff, right? So 
We brought in a conversation. Here, here's a uh, tweet on this whole thing. We brought in a conversationist who says the damage is unfathomable. Massive trash piles, human waste, car parts, and even live pigs kept as pets. Experts say it could take decades to recover. Probably will. I mean, the city doesn't have the resources to put this back together, right? I mean, are they even going to try? So the mayor's office said it's still a work in progress and crews will continue to clear the property for several more weeks. A spokesperson also said the campers were offered an immediately available shelter bed, travel to that shelter space, storage for additional belongings and other services. They had to get them out of this, this area. They had to get them out. It got so bad. When asked why it took so long to clear this particular encampment, he said, well, the size of the big four corners site requires a vast majority of SSCC street services coordination center staff members and numerous partners to help address. It's too big for the city to deal with. The pandemic cost, size of the job, and multiple jurisdictions slash partners are all contributing factors. They've got to get on board. They've got to get on, you know, a schedule and work this out. And they've got so many encampments that are not unlike this. This one is just unique from its scale, which is it's so big, you could hide 150 cars in there. And people want to say, you know, people that are less reasonable, they want to continuously say, they're not really bothering anybody. They're just trying to get their lives back on order. You know, give them a tent, give them some food. I'm sure they'll come back. Well, how about the people who had all their cars stolen? How about the natural resources? I mean, if you want to start worrying about the environment, how about you start cleaning out every one of these encampments because every one of these encampments is so toxic for the environment. Let's start there. I say we start there. We'll worry about this whole other, you know, you know, environment thing later. Climate pledge. How about we just start with the encampments, get those cleaned up. That's something we can do very easily. Hey, you can't stay here anymore. You're going to have to take a city or a county or a state sanctioned bed in one of these homes. Otherwise, you're going to jail. How about that approach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not doing that. We're just going to ask people, hey, would you mind going into rehab? I know it's not a lot of fun and you're going to feel like real ass for a while, but it's all worth it. You'll be good. You'll be, you'll be a better human being. Now, you just got to put people in there, right? You have to force them because they're not going to go on their own. As far as the plan moving forward to restore the natural area, Portland Parks and Rec and Bureau of Environmental Services uh, may be able to provide some comments. The plan for Portland Water Bureau and Bureau of Environmental Services properties at Big Four Corners and beyond is to utilize private security and Portland Police Neighborhood Response Team as needed to keep their areas clean, safe, and functional. How long are you going to have private security there for? I mean, how's that going to work out? I mean, are we going to have to, you know, put private guards around all forest areas? Because they could just go there. It'll be years and years, really decades to undo some of the damage, said Bob uh, Salinger. And he's the um, Salinger, I'm not sure. He's the director of con conservation at Portland Audubon. Where are all the tree huggers when it comes to sweeping out these encampments? Where are they all? Hey, you guys said you love the environment. See that area over there? Go get them, tiger. Go clean that bad boy up. Nah, they're not there, are they? They're nowhere near able to help. Comes down to organizations like Andrea Suarez here in Seattle, who runs, you know, what is not a city sanctioned cleanup crew. And she does it on her own with volunteers and with volunteer funds. And she gets in there and gets the job done. It's this, these issues have become too overwhelming, even for the city, especially a city like uh, Portland, to, to physically deal with. So this guy knows the wooded wetland better than just about everyone else and what it took to turn it into one of Portland's crown jewels. He knew how hard it was to get this woodland area just totally clean. And now it's gone the other way. You just let a bunch of people live there. Ah, they're mostly clean. Oh, yeah, they're not. Ugh. Some of the worst damage is in the interior where people are really off the grid and really set up elaborate camps and cut down a lot of trees. So a normal citizen goes into a nature preserve, whacks down a bunch of trees, erects a bunch of structures, puts them up, leaves a whole bunch of garbage. Oh, 
Oh, we'd be looking at tickets. We'd be looking at jail time. It'd be horrible. You have homeless people? Ah, just let them be. They're, they're mostly clean. They'll pick up after themselves. Hey, you guys, you guys will pick up after yourselves, won't you? Yeah, you, oh, you, oh, you want, oh, yeah. Well, I guess we're going to have to spend a couple million cleaning up after you. How much is this going to cost? It's got to be at least a couple of million, right? I know these things run six figure in a heartbeat. So that includes vegetation and ground cover ripped out by vehicles that left ruts deep enough to cradle a propane tank. So several feet deep, human waste and erosion that sent land sliding into the Columbia Slough, impacting water quality and violence that kept the community out. Don't go in there, you might get shot. Don't go in there, you might get stabbed. Likelihood of either? Very high. Don't go in there. This place was extremely unsafe. I know that sometimes people are uncomfortable with having somebody say that. See, here we are. We're still just making excuses for why we don't go and just sweep these places out. But the reality was there's a lot of crime in a place like this, said Salinger. A lot of needles, a lot of contaminants, whether it's feces or engine oil or other things that are out on the landscape now. They're just there. And it's just, ah, it's so sad to see. I mean, there's, there's just no excuse for this. And if you are living off the grid, you know, how about, how about, how about encompassing that whole leave no trace ethic? You know, when you're out backpacking and you want to leave a site, you pick up the smallest little bit of garbage. How about doing that? You know, that would go a long way, wouldn't it? Well, we don't have any garbage service out here since we're living illegally. I guess we'll just dump it on the ground along with whatever else we've got. Car parts? Yeah, no problem. Antifreeze? No problem. Used motor oil? No problem. Used battery? No problem. But then I got to work with Climate Pledge Arena here in Seattle. Do we have anything else we could be working on besides naming our arena after that? How about we actually work on the actual climate, which is, yeah, the environment, right? It's what we're doing here, right? I think what's been so sad is that what we've heard back from the city for many years now is just they don't have time, resources, capacity, or structure to even work with groups on issues like this. It's way beyond beyond them that Portland is a city in crisis when it comes down to this. And Seattle, it's got its areas that are out of control. LA, you bet. San Francisco, you bet. There are many, many cities that have this. And it's it's like getting on top of them. You just got to get on top of them and go because otherwise they're just going to be wildly out of control. This one, this one with live pigs, 150 cars. And just a bunch of cowboys that used to live there, right? I mean, people just running around shooting each other. So that whole thing where, uh, you, you know, they're mostly clean. They're mostly peaceful. It'll be all right. Yeah, that's a misnomer. And we all know it. Everybody that's reasonable is like, okay, yeah. You don't want to be anywhere near homeless encampment. So I just got through another podcast kind of talking about the economic impact on housing communities from homelessness, from homeless encampments. Yeah, you know, it's gotten to the point in Portland where real estate agents are literally coming out, coming out and saying, it's impacting things. There's a dollar amount you can attribute to that, and it's impacting things. So if you want to check that out, that's another podcast that there, that's out there. Hey, something that we just most recently came up with was uh, there's a lot of content that I can't show to you because it is deemed not acceptable for the advertisers. It has to do with public safety. Sometimes it has to do with a criminal act that somebody does. It's in mainstream, you know, the news, local news can cover it, but I can't cover it on, on certain platforms because it's deemed to be tragic. It's deemed to be inappropriate. It's deemed to be unfit. It's deemed to violate terms of service. Well, our solution is we basically come up with reasonabletv.com and you're going to see our good stuff on there. You're going to see the stuff that you can't see on these other platforms because we've literally been pushed off from the standpoint of censorship. And so we've had to go to a platform, our own, create our own, where you can watch this stuff and not worry about who's going to take it out, take it down. 
So go, go check out reasonabletv.com. It's 10 bucks a month. We're just, we're cranking it up. I'm doing a lot of content for it right now, but it's where the content that I want, have wanted for the last few years to read for you guys, even the funny stuff. I mean, we had a stupid criminal in Bellevue trying to jack a couple of bags out of a Louis Vuitton store. He ran to what he thought was the doorway. Oh, nope, not a door. That's a plate glass window you just ran into, buddy, that you knocked yourself out on. Or the criminal in Arkansas, he stole a motorcycle, no plates, 1.30 in the morning, eluding the police, He's got a gallon of gasoline on his backpack. He ditches the bike after being chased. Yeah, police officer tases him. How does that go? Well, I'll give you one word, fireball. Ugh, not good. Yeah, and it's caught on video. You can watch that here on news, uh, reasonabletv.com. So news for reasonable people, you can find it all over. Also on Rumble. We've been on Rumble for a long time. We've been on BitChute for a long, long time, couple of years. I'm just kind of putting that word out there. So if you want to watch our content on other sites, it is out there, including Reasonable TV. Hope to see you there. Hope to have you support us. Keeps us independent. It keeps us from being shut down like we had not long ago, where for a week, couldn't say anything. We were shut down. That's it for me on this one. We'll catch up on the next one. Talk. We'll talk then then. All right. Talk then then. Whatever. See you there. Bye for now.